add some extra color in there, which you are also welcome to do. And then after bisque, if I wanted, I could come in and line this, but I could also do that now before it goes to bisque at all, because then I don't have to worry about firing it again. So I don't really have a fine liner at my desk. Hold on. So if I take my tiny brush and then I can give it some details that it didn't have before, just to kind of define the, oh, that's purple, define the shape a little bit more. So that it reads more butterfly instead of just messy glaze. And then I can maybe add some dots in there. The whole point is just to kind of give it a little character before it goes into the kiln. Because then once it's fired, then I'm done. I don't. All I can do is all I have to do is dip dip it into the clear, and I'm good to go. All right. So while that's drying, your squares should be dry now, and we're gonna do a surface treatment down here. Uh, before we get started. So at your desk, um, you will have a jar that looks like green glaze, but this is actually wax. And there should be a rubber band around it with a paintbrush. And that paintbrush is for wax only. So this wax is a cold wax and you can brush it on using only that brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a very thin coat over box number nine so that the wax will be dry by the time I get to work it. Now, things you need to know about cold wax, you only use the paintbrush that comes with the jar. That's because if we get wax into the glaze bottles, then those glazes will be ruined and we don't want that to happen. Now, this this particular wax is dyed like a greenish blue color so that you can see where you have put the wax. I have put a lot on there, so I'm gonna scrape some off. And once it dries, it will be kind of like a, a green color, but the green burns out because it's just food coloring that is in the wax. Things you need to know about wax, cold wax. It is washable and water soluble on clothing and it's sticky, but it is wax. So you can't use a hair dryer to dry it faster. It needs to dry. So if you get it hot, then it's gonna melt. So, cause it's wax. Uh, as soon as your table is done with the wax, you're going to bring your paintbrush over to the sink, a little bit of soap, wash the bristles, and then that paintbrush goes right back under the rubber band that is around the wax bottle so that it stores like, there we go, it stores like that. And then these are in the cabinet, the storage cabinet over there, and I'll show you later. So if you ever want to use it, when you put it away, it should look just like this, okay? Um, if you get wax somewhere where you don't want to get wax. Now, if it is on the clay, then I can scrape it away. If you get it on bisque, you got to re-bisque it to get rid of the wax so that it burns away. Uh, because once that a bit, uh, wax gets into the bisque, into the pores of your clay, it's going to resist all glazes and everything you put on it. So that's why we can't mix the brushes for wax into the glaze brushes because it will mess up your pieces and it will mess up other people's pieces. So I just put the wax on there so that we're ready to go for when that time comes. Now, at your table, you also have uh, little punchers that look like this, okay? 
little paper punchers. So choose the shape that you like and just punch out one piece of paper or depending on your shape, if you wanted to layer, you could do that as well. I think I'm gonna do that, just give myself some extra. There could be a couple, if you don't like the shapes, they're at other tables as well. Okay, now you can use wax as a resist for glaze, um, but you can also use tape. I didn't, it's just a little fiddly to do that on such a small surface, so we'll probably do that for another assignment. But I grabbed these squares that I just cut out with the puncher, and I'm going to gently <laughs> attempt to, to, how do I want to do this? I think I want to do this. Okay. So I'm actually going to do mine so it looks a little sort of like a butterfly. Okay. And I'm going to move. <laughs> it's being a bit of a pain. I'm using two. But you can, you know, when you're trying to create patterns, 